How you do? All right. I was gonna say, um, like I, I really had wrote down like stuff I want to look at, but I know uh, that like that, that, that was definitely one of them. Like when you said so, like I got to say okay. so now, now that I know how to use low today and high today, I guess I'm wondering like how to how to utilize it. You know, okay. like, um, I wanted to like you know talk about like top down and then like levels. Okay. So, so real quick, right off the bat, how to how to utilize the high and low in the day comes in play once you've done the top down analysis. So let's okay. go ahead and I'm going to start. I'm going to do a whole top down here on this goal. So here looking at gold, you know, first thing you want to do is whether you go all the way back to the beginning of time or you just start with a little space on what you can see. What you first need to identify are the previous, is the uh, most recent swing on whichever time frame you're analyzing. So with the top down, we're starting on the monthly. So it's clear as day to see that the most recent completed swing is right here. Yeah. We got a high confirmed because price reversed. We have a low confirmed because price reversed. So now, what we're doing here is going to evaluate if, is if, in fact, this high is a double top, which, in my opinion, it is. And you'll see why I've come to that. And that's why I've been selling gold like crazy. I'm, I haven't been buying yeah, gold. I, I've been seeing a couple of people sell. Fuck out of gold. I've been selling at all the highs. I've been selling, like, like right now, uh, let me, I think I got a position way up high. Well, it's uh, right in here. It's currently 3,500 pips in profit. That's just one position. But I've been selling gold at all of these peaks here. I sold here, here, and then I got that new current one here. I'm, I've been selling gold at all the retraces. I haven't been buying these little, these little spike ups, but what I've been doing is waiting until the spike ups finish and I've been selling it. So I've been selling. I sold at least three peaks over the past, past uh, shit. Uh, really, about over the past year, I've been selling gold. I haven't been doing much buying at all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've been doing, and that's where the patience comes in. You know, you just sit back and wait, and then when that shit pops, that's when you pull the trigger. So it's always best to first, of course, do the top down so you know which overall direction the market's trending over a longer period of time versus, you know, just getting in there and being able to see what uh, price is doing right now. I see. Because you can see something right now and then price come over and knock you over the head tomorrow and be like, damn, how'd that happen? The long-term trend was the other way. Yeah, and see, and see, that's why I think I've been winning recently because I've been staring at the Navy and then I noticed when I was looking at the Bible, like even they was looking at the daily and the and the um and the uh, what's that the, the weekly those are right the daily and the weekly. Once you find out those daily and the weekly trends, it's it's a little easier to get in there and find your position to continue in those trends. Yeah, and see me, I was just jumping to the to the money maker. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> so here, what we what, what, once we've identified that most recent swing, now we're able to analyze what's going on in this swing. We can do one or two things. We can apply Fibonacci, which is just the retracement and we're just gonna go swing high to swing low. And when you're doing the swing high to swing low, you're doing the peaks. So find, so the start is at the peak of this candle, the very tip, and the end would be at the very bottom of the trend, which is this candle. And now we're looking at where price is now. Notice how price came all the way back. Yeah, it mitigated. Right, to the 100. Let me change that color so it's a little clear. Blue. We'll change that to yellow. All right, so you see how we came all the way back to the 100 in return. That's not a coincidence. That's based on specific targets created by the market maker or created by the algorithm or the market in general. So this is obviously 
now seen as a double top here on the monthly. So with the monthly top, with the monthly time frame confirming a double top and now a uh, retrace down likely into the 50 to 61 area right in here. Not only is it is it identified by the Fibonacci point, it's also identified by the structure that, that's sitting here. Price is always seeking structure. So after a rally and you see price starting to reverse, just look for previous structure in that particular trend. So in this particular trend, we see it stalled out here at the 100. And now it's slowly but surely coming down. If we wanted to just eyeball and say, where could price possibly fall to? Here's the structure. And structure is identified by any pause or delay in a swing. So here's the swing. Here's the pause or delay in that swing. Can you see that? See what I mean by that? The pause and delay in this particular yeah. rally? It was basically like trading sideways for a second. Right. That's going to be your target on the retrace, where the price comes back and then bounces. Price is definitely coming back to return to the last place they consolidated. Because uh, mentally, you got to remember that consolidation is when they're accumulating contracts. So 90% of traders are either buying or selling during consolidation areas. So with this rally, just, just uh, mentally what, or psychologically what we would think, what we would expect by looking at this particular swing is that as price rallied, they gained contracts in here, likely trapping sellers. Sellers were probably piling in, piling, piling in, and then price shot up. So now that price did shot up and wiped out those potential sellers that they grabbed here. Now the market's going back to that point. Because you got to remember, every place the market consolidates, the market makers or the big banks have also grabbed a position in that area. Although they didn't grab a sell position, they took a buy position. So you're saying like whenever they start selling countries, they can really go any direction. Right. They can go any direction they want. Once they're in consolidation, that's where the breakout comes. The breakout is the is the, is the uh, market shifting. And it'll it'll either reward those who got it right, like the buyers who were in here got paid. Sellers that were in this consolidation got slapped. Basically. So whenever you're in a consolidation area, that's where the breakout comes. So for example, if we go in here and actually look at this consolidation area, I'll show you how the breakout was spotted. Yeah. Or the breakout could have been really, could have really been played. Sense. Really made sense because you got that big, that big ass um, indecision counter right there too. Exactly. So going back over here to the breakout, which is right here yeah. in that box that we just drew. Let me get to it. Well, I probably got to go one time for lower. So I want to like, so your, your typical frames is like the monthly, then you jump to the daily, or you don't really use the weekly like that? Uh, yeah, monthly. And uh, I, use, I really use all, all the time frames. But just for this uh, breakout that I want to show right here, I'm going to use this. It's actually, we can see it on this weekly. So you see, here's the breakout right here. That range was created a high, low. So basically, here's the range. And once that range was broken out, you see our price advanced. Price did not exceed the low of this range. So your breakout would have been actually uh, literally right here. Your breakout entry would have came right here at the top of this range. So what you, you see it kind of how it bounced and created this range. Let me draw it. See me, I probably would have... Uh... Saw that bullish engulfing and took it. That one right there. This uh, this one right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one with the, the long green candle over. The and see what likely happened here 
just for uh, animation, is traders bought in here, saw this break out here, bought some more, bought some more, and then got wiped out by that big book bearish candle right here. Yeah. Probably got wiped out by that, and then they saw a price take off and be like, damn, I was right. They got slapped in this consolidation area. Yeah. I kind of been noticing that too, like ever since I've been uh like reading into like really just following the counters, like you know, just kind of li like reading into the story of the anatomy and kind of help you out. Oh, definitely. Like the, the price action. Definitely. All right. So going back to the top down analysis. All right. So there's the the week the monthly. Now, of course. As you get, as you start off with the uh, monthly and the weekly, there's not going to be much, much to draw. Of course, you won't have much drawing until you get down to the hour, four hour, and things like that. But overall, just off this um, monthly, that's this is basically what we're looking at. We can remove the Fibonacci now. We have our swing and our high and peak points. Now we, of course, would go down to the weekly. Now looking here at the weekly. Keeping in mind that we're in a downtrend because we've already analyzed that on the monthly. So we know we're heading down. Now here on the, on the weekly, it's showing down. Here we have a peak. Here we have a lower low uh, or a low. So we have a, a swing here, swing here, swing here, swing here, swing here. Swing here. Notice how this move here just retested this previous level. Then we swung down and we swung back up, down and back up, and now we're down again. So overall, this is the current direction on gold for the weekly that I see. Notice how it brings us all the way back to that consolidation area. Uh, that, that's what we saw on the, on the monthly. Right, that's what we saw on the monthly. So as you do each time frame top down, you'll start to actually be able to even draw out future movement while you're while you're looking at it, while it's being created. Rather, once you once you get in the hang of being able to do your top down analysis consistently, you actually start to see price create itself or the actual trend in the market create its patterns. So if you look here. Of course, now you always have to keep in mind the trend within the swing. And what I mean by the trend within the swing is, of course, trends are identified by higher lows, higher lows, higher lows and higher highs, lower lows and lower highs created by a swing. But they're also created by each individual candlestick. So what I mean by that is looking here at the weekly, although this is the swing down over here from the peak. This is the swing down. In this swing down, there are several lower time frame trends in here. And what I mean by that is, of course, we have a down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Down. You see what I'm, I'm I'm doing here? I'm literally just tracing the candle. Yeah. So sorry, I'm sorry, my bad. I, I, I forgot what you had said earlier. You said you said keep in mind that the swing and the trend. That was you said. Right. Keep in mind that the swings, of course, are identified by higher highs and higher lows. But there's trends inside the swing, which would appear on lower time frames. So, example, this is an entire swing down because we got a peak and a peak. But in here, each candle is creating a trend on a lower time frame. And that's created by the higher, like, for example, let's go ahead and just map this whole particular, this whole swing out and hit the, um, so we got the peak, we got the low of the candle that formed that peak. Then we got a lower high, lower low. Lower high, higher low. So example, in this particular full swing from here to here, 
this is a trend by itself. And then lower highs, lower lows again. Then we got higher lows, higher highs, lower lows, higher highs, lower lows, higher highs, lower lows, higher highs, lower lows, higher, lower, higher, lower, higher, lower, higher, lower, higher, lower, higher, lower. Them lower highs, lower lows. Right, right, right. In the overall swing, straight down. In the individual, in, in each particular candle creates a trend as well. So going, zooming into where we're at now. Yeah. Here we have an uptrend and a downtrend. Uh, it's an upswing and a downswing, but the trends will be identified on the lower time frames that created that individual candle. The best way to analyze a trend is starting to get familiar with each individual candle and its highs, highs, and its highs and lows compared to the previous candles, highs and lows. So right, let me go back into right here. Here, of course, we had a swing high, a swing. And what I'm uh, looking at is just this peak to this peak. So we know this is a swing. Look at the highs and lows and the candles that made that swing. We got the low, high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. Now, on this first white candle, what do we see? Lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. Change. Lower high, exactly. Trend has changed, and the trend line would have been drawn right here, connecting these lows. So, connect these lows to here. This would have been the trend line. Now, look what happens when I go to the four hour. There's the trend that we just drew. Here's the, that trend that we were looking at on the monthly. So as you see, you can even see exactly where this particular trend was broken. So I brought 18, probably what, 29, something like that. 20, what exactly. I'm and that is exactly where I've been selling. I started selling right here. Yeah. That eight, eight, as it was actually about about two weeks ago when we started selling about 18, 20, 18, 19. That's, this is that area right here when I called that sell. And notice how now we're getting those lower lows and lower highs. The trend has changed. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you a question. So you said the best way to analyze the trend is to identify the high, basically the highs and lows of the candles. Right, in the individual candles. So once you've identified the swing target, now you want to utilize the individual candles to find your placement in those swings. So now go, and that's also, that also plays a major role in the highs and lows of the day. Yeah. Because essentially in order for a candle or a particular uh, currency to trend, it must create series of higher highs and higher lows. Not only that, the, the trend in the candle higher highs or higher lows is what creates the uh, entire swing. So you, you said the trends and the candles create the swing. Right. The trending in the candles create the swing. Without higher highs or higher lows or a trend, there is no swing. Sense. Because a swing has to be created by a trend. Trends are formed by a series of higher highs and higher lows, lower highs and lower lows, which are created by the individual candles. So even in this, although it's clearly swinging down, you can clearly see the trends in this swing created by the higher highs and higher lows. And we'll start with the peak of it. Notice how all these candles here, as price moves from left to right down, 
each one of these candles is forming lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. Now, in that particular, when you're reading that particular trend, once you see a, a change, that level is then identified as support and resistance. So here, starting over here at the top, we have a high. Not only is this the highest point, it's obviously the highest point in the previous swing as well, because we know that's where price changed direction. If we zoom out, we know that this area is the peak. So we know a new trend started. Here we got a lower, uh, a lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, all the way until we got right here. Which then created a level of support. But you got to keep in mind that the previous, in order for price to continue its trend, it would have to retest one of the re previous highs without exceeding it, which would have been right here. At 18.27. See how now price has retested this higher level and then broke through the resistance and then back in sync with the trend, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. And then right here, we got a low in trend, but then we got what? A higher low. So this is also trend over. Trend over swing still continuing. So we could identify this label, level right here as support because now we're seeing higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher lows, higher, I mean, higher highs, higher lows until we got right here. So then the trend pushed back down, lower highs, lower lows, until we got right here. Because now this candle has formed a higher low. So now we know this level of here is a supportive area and price, as you see, bounced through it. Now price has created a range. This would be level two. All right, now I'm going to zoom back out and show you what I mean by that. Now that we've had this, this cycle here, which is an up cycle, here we got level one. Remember, level uh, three becomes level one. So this would be level three from the previous swing or the previous cycle. Yeah. One. Two and three. Level three becomes level one. Then we got level two. Now, now it's about to come into its own level three. Right. Now it's going to create its own level three, a new level three. Which clearly, as you see, revisits the previous cycles beginning. So we and, and we and we can confirm this because we've already done the analysis on the monthly. We already know it's still trending down. We already know we're uh, we're heading downwards. Now we have to just find our entry to continue in that area and in, into that direction. Now if we look at the current price in level, current price where it's at now, in level two, here on this down move, now we can zoom in here and really just focus on what we've got here. We know based on the higher time, of course, it's, 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 it's um, going to be easier for you to learn when you keep your, keep your markings from your higher time frames up. But just for this purpose, we're going to go ahead and just zoom in right here. And now look at these two uh, particular areas, these areas right here uh, involving the current week. This was the, uh, current, of course, four hour separators identify a whole week. Yeah. So looking at this previous swing or trend down, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. You notice how right here from this peak, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows until we got right here. And we got a higher, higher low. 
So we know this level here played as some support. And then as you see, it was broken, which means it's now resistant. As we keep going down from left to right, now we got lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs until we get right here. Now what do we got? We got a higher low. So now we know this level here is supportive. So now you then we uh, say that again. So what you say is ranging right now since it's kind of like. Right. It's ranging or we can particularly since we already done the higher time frame analysis, we can already pre uh, assume that price is going to continue to break down because yeah. we know where the higher time frame is heading. So now that we're at this level, we can continue to go. We can now move the uptrend, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, until right here. Now we got a lower low. So this is also a level. And see, I didn't just think that just, you know, just follow the counters like that. I mean, I mean, I, I probably look at the recent ones, but I ain't just like, you know, kind of sit down, like kind of literally trace. Yeah, right. Like trace highs, lows, highs, lows, yeah. and really, it, and that's 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 it. it get, it's that easy. So now <laughs> we, it, it really is. So you see, now we pop, we uh, drop back down. Notice how this level was created right at the beginning of this previous level. Yeah, it's crazy. I did that, Doji. See me knowing me, if I was how that Doji, I probably would have took it back. Right here. Yeah, because you see, because I like one thing I read like in the Bible. Like whenever you see a lot of a lot of um, lower, like longer lower tails, like longer lower weeks, I mean, you know, the buyers probably have a little pressure, right? So and they did. You see yeah. that now the uptrend started, but this this would have been a short term scalp, yeah, not necessarily a swing trade. This would have been a short term scalp for say uh, about with this being gold, about three thousand pips, you would have got off of this buy. Yeah, and see, and see me. I'm a scalper. I, I, I know. I know. I know. It's a lot of y'all swingers, but I don't know. I'm impatient. <laughs> and see, the uh, the only thing with that is the trader would have needed to know that they are in a short term buy position, and that they would need to take profit because price is coming back to their entry. And yeah. notice how price did just that. So had the scalper not taken profit here. It would have been sick. Yeah, they would have been sick by the end of the week. Because notice how this is a week. This is four hour. So this is Monday. So this is like, that was probably like four to like some of the morning, four p.m. to like some of the morning. I, I really been noticing it. Like I've been noticing like what times like like near the periods. I think it's like that period right there in the middle. So that's like four p.m. So they probably had uh, this. Well, this is the um the four hour. So this would have actually been uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. This midweek oh, yeah. would have came in Wednesday, Thursday night, and that as that that's it, as classic as they say, midweek reversal. Midweek oh, yeah. reversal came back and took anybody took them out. So that's why I like to if I do do um, weekly uh, scalps, I literally trade off midweek reversal. And that's analyzed on, of course, on the four hour chart, you know, halfway through it, you know, you're at Tuesday, Wednesday, look for the pattern. And if it's reversing, you know, you clearly got a, a midweek reversal coming in. So you can literally pull up your four hour chart and literally, if you wanted to scalp around or uh, 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 browse around the pairs and look for a, a particular pair that's showing a midweek reversal come Wednesday, Thursday. And, just, and that's literally just by looking at the four hour chart. So. Uh, looking here, so just looking say, at this. They usually happen on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Right. You can expect a midweek reversal when the pattern's clear on really a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, any day inside that week. Um, let's go right here on this four hour. So here's Monday. Here's that midweek reversal. Going back to uh, previous week, here's Monday, Monday, Tuesday. In the Tuesday popped up, but look what happened Wednesday, Thursday. Man, re reversal. Yeah, both times. Now, based on 
structure and everything, you can kind of anticipate if you're even going to have a midweek reversal or not. So going all the way back to this week here, which clearly was a consolidated week. This week didn't do much of anything until Friday when it spiked up. Yeah. So we know this level is, is a consolidation level. Notice how it just popped up there. Monday on this new week came straight down. Here's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It was a straight week, no midweek reversal. No midweek reversal here. Then you get into the next week, consolidation on Monday, Tuesday. Wednesday popped up to this previous level of consolidation and gave us another mid and gave us the midweek. Then we can see how this uh, current week, the previous, the most recent week, Monday, Wednesday, or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, rallied up to a previous resistance level. Previous support broken here becomes resistant and gave us another midweek reversal. So I guess that would be like some lesson around, right like follow, follow, like, because it's, it's really numerous series of support and resistance. And exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So now, also keep in mind that every candle will will likely retest the previous candles high or low. Every single candle, starting from the minute to the four hour or to the monthly, every single candle will likely retest the previous candles high and low. Because think of it like this, every candle created is its individual price range. Yes. Every single candle is its individual trading period and trading range. So let's go and look here at the four hour. Here on this four hour, the current four, uh, no, let's not look at the four hour. Let's look at the weekly. Here on this weekly, notice how if we start right here, as a matter of fact, uh, let's look at the monthly. Here on the monthly, here we got, let's just start right here. We got a high and a low, which means that this area is the range, the most current range here off this monthly. Now at the new candle, which is here, Cleared the low. Here's the high. So these three points are going to be your most strongest support and resistance on that particular time frame. The open, high, and low of the previous candle. So with this monthly that we're looking at, here's the open, open, high, low, close. Here's the open. Here's the high. Here's the close. And here's the low. And if you look at the current candle that came right after it, that candle tested the close and low. It was unable to hold above the close to even get near the open or the high. Then now look Look at this this candle here, the, the that, that particular candle. Here is the high. There is the open. Notice how this open is pretty much level with the previous candles closed right in here. Then we got the low, and it's closed here. Then look at the candle that came after that. Tested the low, was unable to hold. And formed its own low. The close is here. And then look at the candle that opened right after it. This yeah. candle broke the previous high. Broke the previous high. It was unable to go any lower than the previous than that particular close. 
Then it showed a, pre, uh, a, a higher close than the previous candles open with a higher high. So in essence, in this particular candle, we have a low, a higher low, and a high and higher high. Yeah, and, and, and that's, that's a whole month. So, so every candle, that was really like a bullish month, basically. Like exactly. Months and bullish months. And then, and then after that bullish swing there, notice how that monthly candle only went to the open of the, the previous monthly candle right here. Yeah, and it, and it didn't break. And it didn't break. And you see it, it now that formed a reversal. That is another confirmation that the, that the monthly is, in fact, peaked out and, in fact, coming down. Now, if you look at this current month that we're in now, it's almost extremely obvious that it's about to retest that low. That it's coming here. Yeah. So basically, with that being said, that in a nutshell explains exactly why I've only been selling gold. I already see the monthly target. So with seeing the monthly target, all you have to do on the lower time frames is find patterns that put you in alignment with the overall monthly direction. That's why I do the higher time frames first. Because once you know where the higher time frames go, it makes it a lot easier to see what's going on beneath or, or, or beneath it. So now we basically, have the monthly target, right? Go ahead. I'm gonna make, so basically you said once you find the monthly target, you kind of you look for patterns and, and trends that basically um like confirm what you saw. And that's how you exactly. Get Okay. Exactly. So by analyzing that this monthly is heading down, I'm on an intraday basis, I'm only looking for patterns that confirm above the previous day's high or below the previous day's low because I know I'm going down. So in a downtrend, the peaks for intraday entry are going to go above the previous day's high or at a retest of the previous day's high. Our, our sell entries are, are going to come right, then, right there. And I'll show you, once we get down to, that, uh, the, to the hour and get into the daily, I'll, you'll start to see what I'm, what I'm, what I'm referring to. Yeah. But going back here to the monthly, we know we're looking for downtrend. I'm going to leave this here, and then we'll go to the weekly. Here awesome. on the weekly... I'm definitely probably gonna re re listen to this. I wanna listen to what you just said. I heard. Okay, it. yeah, I, yeah, I, most I, definitely. That's, I, that's I, why I, I went ahead and, and that's <laughs> why I went ahead and made sure it recorded because I could get the rambling and talking about all type of shit and stuff that starts falling out my mouth. I know. <laughs> you definitely gave away a gem right there, but it's like it was a lot. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna listen to that. I'm just gonna sit over. All right. So now, uh, based off what we did here on the monthly. Coming into the weekly, this is what we're looking at. This is what we can see off the weekly. So now looking at this weekly, it's it's almost obvious here that we had the, that up that upswing. Now we're back down. Now if we look in closely, we've got lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows until where? Right here, where price changed again. And we got the series of higher highs, higher lows, and then what? It stopped again. Right there at that previous level that we marked off, that's where we uh, stopped at and turned around again. So now based on looking at this weekly, we can clearly identify where we're headed next week. Because overall, we know the monthly's coming down. It's, it's September 25th, so we know the monthly only has one more week. Yeah. So if we're expecting the monthly to hit its target down here at 1675, we've got one week left. We've got a clear breakout coming here on the weekly pattern. We know exactly what to do all week next week. Yeah, so yeah. You know what I'm saying? All we got to do is find the peak. Now on that, what we need to do is, of course, keeping in mind 
that each candle retests the high, low, open, or close of the previous one. Now we can pretty much look at, I'm going to open a new chart. Now we can pretty much look at the, the, the monthly or the weekly from a perspective like this. Now we know we're still heading down. Now we can simply hit the, the close or uh, the previous week. We'll actually do this doji. We got the close. We got the open. We've got the high and the low. Our entry setup is going to come off of one of these levels to continue down. Now that we have the levels identified here off the weekly, we can go into something, say, the four hour and now see those levels in more detail. Yeah, wow. so, right, right, right. Each time, <laughs> it, 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 it's wild how each time frame literally works hand in hand with the next one. Yeah. And, and, a, lot of, and a lot of traders fail to fully understand that concept. They, they fail to fully understand the simple concept that each candle is created by the, the, the one below it and the one above it. So looking at this now, zooming in here, we can clearly see how these previous four hours now are starting to create the lower high. From this peak uh, candle here, we can now see low, a high, low. Notice how this candle has a lower high that has not exceeded the previous, uh, this previous high. We did get a higher low. So now we can look at price being trapped in this range. Price is overall trapped in this range here. From so swing like, high to low. So I want to like so so whenever you saying like lower like you know lower low higher high low like I guess like how how you know well I'm I'm guessing you just going out there one candle and you kind of just going down with you ain't really focusing on like everything else is just right because if it, it, once you get down in here you're looking at more uh, real time type situations. I see what you mean. So now we're really just focusing on each candle as it's created. We already have the uh, directional bias based on where the month is going. So now we're just looking at these individual candles. We see we got the uh, low, lower low, lower highs being created. So now with it, that previous four hour that was just created, it was a doji. It was a dud. That last hour of the week, it literally right here, it was a dud. It went all the way down and then stopped literally back where the previous candle closed right here. So is it? So there, right there, is just a line. I ain't even right. right. It's, it's pretty much a, a a a stiff a stiff doji. Yeah, a real stiff doji. But looking at it, notice how, of course, this four hour candle is completed. So it has a higher low, but the low is lower. So we can connect these lows like this, or the highs like that. So like, if you just see a stick like. Is it, that's technically a bearish candle, or is that a? It's, um, it's, it's not one. necessarily. Yeah, it's neither one, but it still has properties such as an open, low, high, and close. That's crazy. And it's just, so the lows here, the high, open, and close, all in the same spot. Ah, uh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, there's every candle, no matter how it looks, it's always going to have those properties: a high, low, open, and close. Every candle has a high, low, open, and close. And so I wonder when you um when you had labeled the open, high, low, and close on that weekly candle, and then you jump down to the H uh four. -huh. What is what exactly did you say that that um that showed you? Was it like a I can't remember the words you used. Like um, if you went here and then you went to the H four, and you said, okay, now now we see R, and then I'm I guess I'm looking for that word. I forgot what you had said. Okay. Um. What I what I was pro what I was meaning when I said that was now that we've done our analyze anal analysis on the weekly, there's yeah. really nothing else to really draw on the weekly. So I just bumped down to the next higher, which would be the daily 
or the four hour. Of course, you can see more more activity on the four hour than you can the daily. That's why I went straight to the uh, four hour there. Yeah, that, 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 that was where I was looking for that, the price of TV. Yeah. So now, now that we're in here and we already have our directional bias for next week and, then, and uh, things of that nature, we can simply go to the one hour and, and plan our move based off th what happens here. And what happens here, since we've already confirmed we're looking for short, we're looking for sales, that's where your previous day's highs and lows come in play. Because remember, like I say, every candle retest the previous high, low, open and close of, of the last candle created. And it really comes in handy when you're looking at the one hour and below based on days. So with that being said, also, we know the open or the, the high and low of the day of the days are the strongest support and resistance. So looking at this particular chart, we know we're moving down. So now just looking at what we, what we want to identify is the daily support and resistance. And that's found by an a, a area in which highs of the day or highs of the low are all in the same spot. So looking at this, looking at these highs, here would be the top of that range. Here's a high of the day. Here's another high of the day. So that's two highs of the day plus this low of the day. That's a solid level. Now looking here at the downside, look at these lows of the day, how the lot tracer is going damn near straight across. That would also be an identification level. So overall, on this daily, the range is right here. And that's seen by the hour. Now watch what happens when I go to the daily. This is the range we're in. And this range here was found off of, the, off of the one hour, just looking at where the highs and lows of the previous day were all, all met up or were level. That makes sense? Yeah. Good deal. And now, from this point, this is the area in which we're going to trade off. So we're going to find our sell entry based off this range. They stop this range here. We are looking for our sell entry to continue to break out here on the weekly down. So what we'll need to do for this situation is now that we have our zone. To be it's a nice day outside. Oh yeah, I was just looking outside. I got I got my window <laughs> open and shit. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nice. Yeah, it's nice. Looking good out there. And so this would be the high of Friday. This would be the low of Friday. Our trade is likely going to come into the area and then bounce back down. And sell it. Hold it all week. As far as gold, that's where I ultimately see gold. Once it breaks through this, it's coming down here to this previous low. That's why I see gold breaking 16, breaking into the 1600s. A lot of people have been like, you really see gold going that low um, based on the pattern? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Based on the pattern, yes. You know, mentally, everybody, you, you would just think, okay, gold's going up, gold's going up. But based on the pattern and the trends that are forming on the chart, gold is going down. And we've got a, a clear ideal target for it. Now, um, I did want to go over this in real time, which we can use some crypto for this. So let's go over here to my XRP. Now, um, now uh, basically we'll, we'll do some, some straight up intraday here with this XRP since it's actually moving in, in real time. Looking at this XRP, 
I'm gonna zoom in here on this hour. This is this is the int- This is how we would prepare for an intraday without fully analyzing the top down. If you just came in here on a regular basis, just say, okay, you want to find a pair, trade a pair. You would come in here to the hour and simply look at the patterns in relations to the previous day's high and low. So if we look at those highs and lows, here's a high of the day identified by this tracer. Here's a low of the day. So honestly, this level right here can be seen as a resistance area. Then if you look to the downside, we got a low of the day, low of the day, low of the day, low of the day. Three lows of the day right there in that area. So boom. This is obviously a level of support. So I want to so, maybe I'm gonna ask a question like do you only um do you only label lows and highs of the days on the hourly? You um do you can do it on any time frame, it's just easier seen on the hour. I got you, I got you. Because you can come down here to the 30 minute or so and see the same same structure setups. So you can s- still see those points. These uh, high and lows are marked all the way through the hour down to the f- uh, one minute. Yeah. So you can see them on every time frame. Best drawn on the one hour because you can actually see the patterns and, and things of that nature. So I'm guessing basically you kind of like you use you use the highs and lows of the days as like supporting resistance, but then you like follow price action to like set up what you noticed in the overall like trend. Exactly. Maybe. Because on an intraday basis for your entry, you're only going to want to enter when the previous high or low day has been been, uh, breached. So looking at current real time, where we're at on this XRP, here's the previous day low. My bad. So right now I'm guessing it it looked like you would sell XRP based on what you just said. It, it, uh, right now, it looks like we will be selling to break uh, to retest the low of the day, which is here. Here's the low of the day. Here's the high of the day, or the high of yesterday. These are high and lows of yesterday. Now, where we're at is the open. This uh, blue line that goes straight across identifies the open. So here we have the high of yesterday identified by this top triangle, this top rectangle box. And the low of the day identified by the uh, the low of the previous day identified by here. So if we look at today, today is literally just in a range, which is the Asian range. The Asian range, of course, is the first eight hours of the day. So the Asian range is likely about right here. We know after Asian range come, we know London session. After the Asian session, we know it's the London session, which is about uh, you know three thirty Eastern, two thirty Central. That's when the London session starts. So if you look at it from this perspective uh, on an intraday basis, we got the Asian range, London session breakout, tested the bottom of the Asian range, failed to reach the yesterday's low, came back into the range. So looking at the Asian range, we've got an Asian range low here and an Asian range high here. So I'll make that red. I ain't gonna say, I, ain't, I ain't never really think to like you know like trade time like that. Like how you just, oh yeah, and 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 see, I learned from binary, so everything I do is based on time and uh, session. Everything uh, is yeah, and that and then you know that comes down when you think about it. Traditionally, money is all based on time. Yeah, they say time is money, and it's literally. <laughs> right, literally, <laughs> literally. So, so now what we can uh, basically, based on this market, what we're looking at is we, we see the Asian range, we see the London session breakout. So now, of course, it's nine thirty twelve. We know we're in the New York session. So we've got London session, Asian session, which ranged between uh, ninety two cents here and ninety five cents. Then we have the London session which retested the Asian session low, but did not hold down there. We can see that by this wick. So the Asian session and the London session both range in the same area. Asian session, London session. Now, the third session would be New York session. 
New York session, which is from 9 Eastern until the end of the day, will now need to break out of the range that it's been stuck in all day. And we'll get one or two things. A strong rally straight up to previous day's high. Or just overall, since we know crypto's obviously in a bullish market, we could possibly get a retest here and then a bounce tomorrow. But based on what I'm seeing here, since remember, um, a double bottom, double top, you'll never really get three or more tests unless price is going in that direction. So with this being one, two, three, the bottom is sealed off. It ain't going lower. It is again weak. We finna go straight to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> literally, literally, literally finna go really straight to the moon. Sense. It really made sense because, like, I remember, like, Ethereum, like me, I traded Ethereum uh, USD. So I noticed on um, September 1st, it like shot off from 3,000 to 4,000. And then it started going real, real bearish like the whole month. So I'm knowing. Like, especially when I saw it, like, touch 2,900, I'm like, okay, this ain't got to take off eventually, like, because ain't, it ain't been, it ain't seen 2,900 in a while. Right. So, overall, now you can see how how the sessions on an intraday basis play and how you can use those to your advantage. With these sessions, the previous high, low of the day, I have two zones marked that high, the yesterday's high and yesterday's low. But now, inside today, created an Asian range, a London range, and a New York range. You'll never get typically, you'll typically never get three sessions in a row doing the same thing. You'll get Asian session being bearish, London session being bearish, New York bullish. Or you'll get a, a, a bearish, bearish, bullish, bearish, bullish, bearish, and it'll look like a, a, like a seesaw. Uh, a bearish, bullish, bearish, or you'll get a uh, a bullish, bearish, bullish, or you'll get a bullish, bearish, bearish. Here we've got really nothing but consolidation. We won't get typically consolidation for all three of these uh, sessions. So we've got consolidation, consolidation. New York is likely going to be the bullish. We could see, we could see the um, market be bearish, but we know overall cryptos long yeah, so dip. even if it does come here bearish this is likely the lowest it'll be and this will be our buy point so yeah. we'll either buy at the retest of this of yesterday's low or buy at the breakout yeah. to yesterday's high uh based on what i'm seeing here and based on the experience and knowing exactly what's going on you see i'm already in a buy my trade is already in profit 56 pip. My uh, buy position, uh, let me turn the trade. And if, if, if you got in at the previous low, that, that's probably. That's where my entry is, at the bottom of the uh, Asian range. I uh, yeah, I see it. So, and so we're likely, go ahead. I know, so, so I wanted this, like, um, so. Like the way that you basically like like uh square it off the sessions is it is it like that in any time frame like who like this I guess I'm asking like these these dollars yeah. like what what time is it exactly on the thirty minute is that a um I it's best to see the sessions on or the 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 timing based on best seen on the one hour and thirty day for intraday. Because you can pretty much think of it like this. Every five hours is a new session. And think about it like this. There's 24 hours in a day. Um, technically, there's four sessions. So each session is typically between five and eight hours long. We know London and New York, they're both eight. Um, so that takes care of from uh, 3 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern. That that uh, that sixteen hours, that that full two shift block. Then you got 
Asian in Tokyo, which Asian is about five, Tokyo is about five and a half. That takes care of the other the other eight hours that are left to co complete the full 24 hours in the market day. So you got from 5 p.m., which starts hour one, then you go to about 2 p.m. or 2 a.m., which is the first eight hours, first nine hours. Then you got 2 a.m. To, to about 9 a.m. That seven hours is consistent of the London. Then you got from 9 to 5, which is the last eight hours of the day, which is New York. So, so, so New York started at 9. Right. New York starts at 9, goes to the end of the market day at 10. I mean, 5. Now, uh, London is at 3, overlaps New York by one hour. So New York, uh, London is from 3 to 10. So from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., both London and New York are fully active. So, so what's, what's at the 5 p.m.? That's Asian? Yeah, uh, Asian starts over again at hour one because the new day starts at 5. Yeah. And see, I'm guessing I'm probably, I don't know why, but I know like whenever whenever the calendar is on the period and my time is on, it'd be 4 p.m. So that, that's because I'm central. Though. That makes sense. Right, right, right. So you got to kind of kind of match up your your time zone. Now I, I I purely base everything on Eastern. So no matter what city, what time zone I'm in, I'm first thinking what time is the Eastern. Then I go back and do the math on where I, where, where I'm at now. So like right now, it's uh, twelve Eastern. It's about nine nineteen my time. I know it's. Deep in the New York, I know the New York session is the only session running right now. It's probably like 11 o'clock. Yeah, it's about 11, about 11, 15 your time. So, so Asian is like what, 5 to 10? Yeah, I would say Asian would be from about 5 to five to 10, then Tokyo from 10 till about 2.30 until London comes in. But Tokyo and Asian typically rain. They typically create the initial range, which London and New York use to break out. So if you literally waited until after until after uh, Asian range in the Tokyo Channel was created and come by new by the time London comes around, you'll be able to have price points in which you uh, are, are looking to take a direction from those levels. The Asian range, you can literally trade each each session off the previous session. So if you came in here scalping on an intraday basis, you can literally trade session to session based off its previous highs and lows. Because when it comes to trading, you got to think every time frame, every trading period creates a new high or low for that particular trading period. Every trading period creates a range. Every new candle or new trading period is going to break out of the previous one. So on a, on a small scale, if you break it all the way down to the hour or, or the day, you know, you got a, a, a day, a day, if you're looking at the day, uh, the day, the day candle, you know, the previous day's candle, the previous candle was a trading period, which created a range. So, you know, the overall day is trading within the previous days. But inside the current day, you also have trading periods created by sessions. So you can trade the highs and lows of those individual sessions in a line to the actual daily range and take advantage of the market that way as well. So you always have a trading period inside a trading period, which is inside another trading period. You can combine the highs and lows and the, the setups from each trading period to fall in line with the biggest trading period of them all. Yeah, just know that, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to have to go back and listen. <laughs> that, that was a lot of gems. Like, <laughs> see, see what's, what's, funny, what's funny is, like, this is why I laugh when people, like, whenever I post about trade and they see me winning and they be like, bro, can you teach me? I'm going to be like, like uh, I can, but I can't. <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's like, trust me, like, I can I can get you the faces, you feel but you're going to have to talk to you, G. You know? <laughs> You know, I to sign up. Like, cause I know this stuff, but I ain't, I ain't, I ain't nowhere near ready to teach. It. Like, you know, I'm still. I feel I'm, you. I feel you. But it, 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 it just comes with, of course, consistency and, and repetition. But it all, 
it all works hand in hand. Everything works hand in hand and together. Like for for example, you can know one thing but be missing. Right. You can know one thing and then be missing this small little piece that fucking sums up everything. And see, and see, honestly, you know, it's crazy. Like, you know, I, I know when I first went to school, I was majoring in engineering. And that's basically how this stuff kind of coming. Because it's like when, when, when you do an engineering problem, you got to look at so much shit. It's almost like you got to use two equations to get one answer for a variable that's in another equation. So it's like and that's up, exactly how the market exactly. works. And so if you fuck up and if you get the wrong answer for this next equation, you already fucked up. <laughs> you messed up the whole, you know, you messed up the whole problem. <laughs> you got the whole problem wrong. If you get one answer wrong, because it's like you got to, you got to find, you might have to find the jewels for this equation. So if you put in the wrong number for the jewels, now you already starting out wrong. You just, right. You, 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 you following the wrong map. Exactly. That's why I'm glad our professor was just like, hey, we just give you a, we give you an A for knowing how to use them, if, you know. But you get better. Right. But I, I ain't graduated engineering, so <laughs> <laughs> I had to get this. I was like, man, look, no, first time I failed a class. I mean, I, like, I remember uh, somebody was like, my mom was like, you good? I said, nah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm feeling statics. She was like, statistics. I'm like, no, statics. Static. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, she was like, what's that? I'm like, you know, the shit for calculating bridges and shit. <laughs> so like, like, like calculating trusses and, and the motherfucking like, right she looking at you like uh no nah, honey i don't know what you're talking about yeah. <laughs> leave it up to me facts i know exactly what you mean them professors don't give a fuck they like i got my phd right right i got mine especially when you the only nigga in there <laughs> 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 Exactly. So now, um, coming from off of that one hour that we were looking at here, yeah. Now going into the fifteen minute, we can see a little more what's going on inside that range. It's crazy how we just now get to the fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I feel like I, I feel like I'm in bullshit. <laughs> and now we have a clear, a clear identification on where we need to go in real time. We know what's going on long term. We know what's going on on the higher time frame. Now we're coming into where we want to pull the trigger. When we get down to the 15 minute and below is when we're looking to actually pull the trigger. So, you know, my first entry is actually about right here. Now, uh, let me actually just to verify, let me see if I'm right. See, this this making me kind of want to trade on a computer more often. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely, I definitely recommend at least doing the analysis on the computer and then taking those particular zones, drawing them up on your phone, and then go about your day. But I would definitely first tackle your analysis on the computer and then take that and just, you know, of course, you just take wherever you put your lines on the computer and just put them on the uh put them on your phone too and then trade off those levels like on the phone if all you do is just mark off the previous day's high low or open and close that'll be the only lines you really need on the on your phone but i'm going here to the 15 minute now we know we're in the range we've got london uh asian range london range we got the two breakout points and we can really see what's going on now we're all the way down to the five look at the five now it's clear as day which way we're going today. Like going up. We're going up. And we can also also go all the, now that we've done our, our 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 analysis all the way from the from the uh daily down, we can even go in here to the one minute and now get a precision entry. Like, you know, my entry is right there. Up for the and also notice how this notice this this was also formed the lower of the day the lower of the day was formed. Uh, let me clear all this off. I know, so I feel like as a tornado, like you you really like showed me a lot of stuff that I ain't even really know the action about. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> <I'm saying. laughs> right, I tell people get on, get on here, and I just start, I just start, I get the rambling, and all type of jewels start falling out. Nah, nah, it's cool. It's, it's kind of like, <laughs> like it's kind of like me when I, when I teach people the piano. They kind of be like, you know, damn, I ain't all this stuff. Like, well, they ain't even look at it like this until you mentioned it. Yeah, especially when I remember when I saw somebody had a DJ, he was like, I ain't know it was gonna be all this. <laughs> See, you you got a you not you don't just play music. You basically a, a trap orchestra slash music therapist slash so, <laughs> you know like, <laughs> like, like you a lot of things. You feel me? Like right. you got to be a social butterfly. You feel me? You might as well right. be having a girlfriend because she's gonna be insecure as hell. So, <laughs> That's, that's and uh, go back to when I uh, uh, just uh, touching bases on my entries at the high and low of the day. Whenever I'm entering and I say enter at the high and low of the day, I'm anticipating the current high of the day that I want to pull my trigger to be after the Asian range. That's one thing you got to check off when you're looking for the uh, high of the day or low of the day. Has the Asian range been completed? First check mark. And that's all. And all you got to do is look at the time. Is it after two a.m.? Check. Yes, it's after two a.m. Okay, cool. Now I can look for. Now after two a.m. would have been right here. Yeah. So after two a.m., price is price would have been down in here. I'd have been like, okay, it's after two a.m. Now I'm looking at has price retested structure from yesterday. Here is the structure from yesterday. So right there, that would have been two yeses. Had I come in here at three o'clock, I would have been like, yes, it's after 2 a.m. So the Asian range is created. Yes, price has tested structure from yesterday. So structure from yesterday would be right in here. Now, question number three, have I broke yesterday's high or low? The answer is no. Here's yesterday's low. Here's yesterday's high. So now, since I have it, those that that's still a possibility for a price to attack one of the previous days high and low. But with that, if the answer is no, price has not retested the previous days high or low. That's when you look at the individual sessions, Asian and London. Because now, in order for price to even attack a previous day's higher low, it first has to break out of the Asian range, Asian and London range. So the Asian and London range really is spread out all the way to here. Because now we're, now we're entering New York here. So you basically saying London got ate up by, by Asian. Take, take. Right. Well, technically, Asian and London didn't have much volume, much change. Uh, so, so looking at, so if, for example, if we would have been looking at our wallets, we wouldn't have saw any change in price at all today on X on XRP. We would have saw our wallet stagger between ninety four or ninety ninety three. It would have went up and down a penny. Now, London session, now this New York session that's coming in is actually going to be the factor in the uh, the trend take that we're actually uh, looking for. So whenever the answer is no about has price, so we got yes, it's after the Asian range. Yes, price is retesting structure from yesterday. No, it has not tested the previous high or low of the day. But yes, it has, it, yes, it's still inside of a range. So now we're looking for price to advance to test one of the high or low of yesterday. With the fact that we did test structure down here from yesterday and reverse and get rejected, there's only one other area in which price would have any interest. And that's the previous high of the day. What I mean by that is due to the fact that price was stuck in a, a range for London and uh, Asia, 
that structure that it did test when we got to the question, did price retest structure from yesterday? And the answer was yes. Yesterday's structure held, which basically held as a barrier for price not to retest the low, but a trampoline for price to retest the high. So basically, this retest in the bottom of the range sealed off any opportunity for price to fall lower. Yeah. So as far as price coming to the lower yesterday, not likely due to the fact structure sat there and held it up. Okay. Now with this range here yeah. and this year, that's likely where we'll be going. So basically, really after you ask yourself, has the age range been completed? And price is structure, did it, did it, um, did it, uh, did it break or test, you know, yesterday and how low you kind of, you kind of sit there and look like, okay, you know, it's like, which, but you basically trying to figure out which one of these is going to test really. That's kind of like, right. Like right. One. And of course, once you've done your top down analysis, it's going to stand right out due to the fact we didn't do our top down analysis. We already know crypto's bullish anyway. Crypto yeah. is is bullish, waiting for the biggest breakout of this of the of the of history. We know that. So, whenever I get down to the intraday and I do an, an analysis like this, it's almost a, a a dead giveaway that we'll be going bullish. Whenever anything checks off for me to take a bullish opportunity on crypto, I'm pretty much confident in that bullish projection right off the bat. Um, let's go over uh, yesterday. How uh, price? How price? We um, how price did fall yesterday? Let's uh, let's look at how how structure was created and how we could have analyzed the sell for that intraday period. Now, of course, I'm I'm a swing trader, so I didn't even look. I didn't even take interest in that sale yesterday. But if we look at it. Here's the Asian range. First, uh, first eight hours. Here's the Asian range. Here's the London. Uh, London, that's not like crazy. Right, but look, look at this here. Here's yesterday's low or the day before it's low. Yeah. We can see that price tested the low and broke it. So that right there is where you would have entered for your sale if you would have took that, took that um short term scalp opportunity. What's crazy? That's really a schematic. That's like a that's a that's a distribution schematic. It was just like one. Right. So and you'll you know you'll notice how how everything starts to make sense. Like once you start piecing uh, things together, like the Asian range, the breakout, the previous days higher low. You can see that this would have been a perfect clean sale setup. It wouldn't have been necessarily a long term something you would have wanted to hold for days due to the fact that crypto is bullish, but it was definitely a great short term sale opportunity. But if you would have held it too long, you're 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 inching back into the red now. Definitely inches. <laughs> yeah, they're coming back for you right now. So that would have definitely been a good you know, three, four hours sell. And see me, if I would have sold that and I would have sold that long ass doji at the bottom, I definitely would have tried to get out. Right here? Yeah, you see that long lower tail? That, that, that's, and you see how it bought right after that? Right, let me show you, let me zoom out and show you what that t where that tail hit. If you look at this, if you look at that tail right here, yeah, look what happens when I drag it over. That's crazy. And I got so, so like sometimes I'm looking at the market like, so can you really? Because sometimes like I see price right, and I look back and I see like what happened every time price came here, and it looked like every time it touched the area, it bought. Exactly, and remember the this is an area of where the high the the lows of the day sit. We can see that with these traces, and remember the previous highs and lows of the day. Are the strongest level of support and resistance yeah. on the chart. That's so that's why price continued to buy 
from this. So look, looking at this level here, look at look at look at look at what happens when we look at it from a daily perspective, our daily viewpoint. That's that same low right here. It was just that one big that one big ass bullish candle. That one big ass bullish candle that shot up. Then yesterday sell retested it. And now today, from here on on, we should be clearly headed back up here to this area, which is that 140. I've been actually, I've had my eye on this 140 for quite some time now. But that's the next level for the breakout. Once we hit that, we're off to the races. Say that again? I got my eye on that 4,000 for Ethereum. Oh, for Ethereum? Yeah, I know you've been having on Ethereum for a while, right? <laughs> I think I think I think uh, Ethereum, where you've been uh, focused on since since we started talking about crypto, I think I remember you always talk about Ethereum, Ethereum. So I know you're heavy on Ethereum right now. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know why. I don't know. Why. <laughs> I think I think it's because uh, like I, I got like that. This in my, well, in my being in the uh, being in the music world, and of course, like you know, they have more benefit. Is there? Any artist? Any? Oh, I ain't gonna say you, you. You was breaking up really bad. I think I heard you now though. Nah, I think it's going out. Because Ethereum is going to be the coin that's most used in their field of expertise. Yeah, I ain't gonna stop. Like, I, I'm just not hearing you. Whatever you said before that, I ain't. Oh, I was saying that um, artists in yeah. general are gonna favor Ethereum out of all the cryptocurrencies. Uh, artists, um, musicians, um, any type of content creators, because all of those type of distribution protocols are based around the Ethereum blockchain. Crazy. So that so it makes sense that you're you have a bigger interest in Ethereum than the rest due to that due to the simple fact that you're a musician. I ain't know. I, ain't know. I never tied them to. I ain't know. Right, you'll 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 notice that a lot of a lot of benefits or a lot of the Ethereum blockchain and protocols and, and tokens are are geared towards content creators. And 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 in essence, you're a content creator. And you know what's funny? Like, so okay, you know, like with me doing IT and stuff, I also that's one reason why I kind of kicked myself in the ass for not buying Bitcoin. Cause when I was 17, <laughs> I kept hearing about the shit, you know. So I'm like, damn, bro, like, you know, but my parents, you know, they ain't they they're like, what the fuck? What is the stock? You know, they don't know that shit. Right, so right, right, right. Out. I had to figure it out. But I'm a little kid, if you know, I don't I ain't know what the hell. I ain't even heard the word crypto. I just heard Bitcoin, carrying Bitcoin. Didn't know what Coinbase was. And it's like I saw it in a dope movie. And then another, the biggest reason why I uh, uh, What was that movie called? Uh, dope. Yeah, dope. Wasn't it? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing it in uh, LA and talking about cryptocurrency. Yeah. And, yeah, okay, gotcha. Yeah, he, was, he was basically selling drugs through the blockchain. So, right, right. And uh, then I did, you know, with me doing IT, I took a whole class. Like I had to do a whole presentation on the blockchain. Like I, I did a presentation on the blockchain. I did a presentation oh, on um man, what else I did? I did a presentation on like the dark web. You feel me? So I definitely like found out about Tor and all the other shit. And I'm and and, and that's why I'm like damn bro. Like you knew <laughs> you right you knew what was going on. on. I knew what was going on. I just didn't ever just sit down and just say you know what how do I buy this shit? Right. But it's cool though. Cause I'm, cause I'm in now, and it's like you know, I feel like I'm catching. I really think Ethereum kind of like gonna be Bitcoin, like Junior. Right, right, like right. It. And um, don't sleep on XRP. XRP <laughs> is the one that's got the most room for the most gain. Cause just imagine XRP catching Ethereum at three thousand. It's only a dollar now. So the gains right there with XRP from a dollar to three thousand are way bigger than Ethereum going from three thousand to four thousand. So that's why I ain't gonna start my plan. So okay, I, I really you, you saw me get some Shiba, right? I planned on right, right. Uh, I planned on like spending like let me see. Cause when my birthday come, I'm gonna have I'm supposed to get the extra check 
I was gonna use mm-hmm. that check to get a whole bunch of ripples. And I was gonna get some safe moon and probably like one other thing. I don't know what yet, but right. Of course now with uh Ethereum, you can't go wrong with uh holding Ethereum. But just percentage wise based on gain, three thousand yeah. to four thousand is like maybe ten percent or seven percent. But a dollar to three yeah, thousand that's like three thousand percent. <laughs> so so the gain of course you're gonna gain on all of them yep. but that that the three thousand plus gains are gonna come on them coins that are still under five dollars nah, but all weird. all the coins are of course gonna uh produce some gains so you can't go wrong with any one of them to be honest i, I just need shiva to hit a dollar I'm right right which uh the uh shiva yeah, I got 15 million shares, so it's like... Yeah. <laughs> he like, yeah, I need a dollar at you. <laughs> <laughs> I get a dollar, I ain't never working again. Damn, like, right, I need a dollar if I should. ASAP. <laughs> I'm, try, I'm trying to get a couple million in the on the NFT art, but I, I want to create my own NFT. So right, like, now, um, as far as safe moon and NFT art, you know, you can grab a million for five, ten dollars right now. That's what I'm saying. I'm yeah, like, you can grab millions of them and, and just just throw ten in each and just sit because you're gonna be sitting on at least ten million. And don't bitches hit a penny. You in there with a ten dollar investment? And that's crazy because people don't believe it's possible, but it already happened for people with Bitcoin. Exactly. It was it was a video of a guy about five or six. Uh, it was about 2013. He said, "Hey guys, man, just put a dollar in Bitcoin." Just a dollar. You know what I'm saying? Just go get a dollar worth of Bitcoin. Right now, it's less than a dollar. But go buy you a dollar worth of Bitcoin, and in 10 years, you'll thank me. Just imagine how many people did or didn't go get that dollar. Exactly. You feel me? And see, me me doing DJing, like, I ain't gonna sign around that time. What was it, 2013? I had just graduated. Yeah, about 13. I had just graduated high school, so... Going into college, I was making a lot of money. Like I, I had worked at the strip club for a little bit. I was getting so many tips. I could have just been oh, security, huh? Sec- oh no, DJ. You were DJ at the strip club. Yeah, yeah I was DJ at the strip club. So I, okay, I, smooth. Uh, it was, so you it was, was cashing out. You were getting tipped out. Yeah, all the time. Like like especially like from the dancing and shit. Cause we were cool. I actually knew some of that. That was a crazy part. <laughs> right. <laughs> nah, like. It's crazy because I'm, I'm really young. I ain't even supposed to be in the strip club. I was like, what, 18? I mean, technically I was legal, but I wasn't just, you know, you got to be right, right. Point in there. But I could have just been throwing my money in there. You know, all them $500 nights, I could have just been putting 100 there, 100 there. 100 there, 100 there. Really I probably had 60 million, probably more. <laughs> right. Like, You'd have been lit. <laughs> I would have been like, Mom, I'm not going to school. I'm going to stay home. They'd be like, why? I'm like, because I'm a pending millionaire. I'm like, right. what's your name? I know a name. Like, you ain't no me and that. They're like, this shit's <laughs> pending. Like, it's on the way. <laughs> on the way. Give me like eight years. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, so you gonna sit on my couch for eight years? You like my dick? Nah, I ain't gonna right. sit on my couch. <laughs> right. I'm gonna be in the studio. <laughs> right, I'm gonna be productive, but just wait for the millions <laughs> to hit. The millions pending. Oh, God. But it's cool because right now they pending, so. Facts. They still on the way. They still on the way. I just, yeah, I, I just got to put some money there. I, I feel like I had they took Ripple off of Coinbase. So I, wish, I wish they would have kept it. But I found yeah, it. I mean, it's, it's still there, but you just can't, you can't, can't buy, buy it. it. Yeah. Yeah. So I know, I know it's coming back. It's just a matter of time. And, you know, that lawsuit is technically still pending. It's almost over, but it ain't over. So it's, still, <laughs> so it's still pending. You know, that legislation and shit like that take forever. They should be, dra- they be dragging that shit out. You know, everybody don't go to work every day. So it really be like you got to wait for the whole office to be back in the building before they can even do something. You know, this motherfucker on vacation, this motherfucker on vacation. Yeah, so it's gonna be a minute before all they legislated done, but when it's done, boy, it's gonna be game time on that fucking uh XRP. So I wonder though, you think uh, you think November or December is like too late to put a ban in the ripple? 
Or you think I need to like, you know, next? Oh, uh, yeah, it's, it'll be pushing it due to the fact <laughs> that, you know what I'm saying, any day now. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Any day now. So, I mean, that's, well, almost three months away. Shit, you know what could happen in three months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a quarter. That's a whole quarter. So. Yeah, so it, it, it depends. I mean, I say, you know, when cryptos do boom around I mean, I really, holidays. I can just put a hundred, though. I can just, I can just get a hundred on. Cause shit, right, because, you know, a hundred, yeah, that shit going to still jump. <laughs> yeah, that's still, that's still about like 3,000. Honest, it's, a it's, lot of the cryptos really take their their move around Black Friday. So with anything, the no the no week the month of November, if it hasn't shot yet, it'll start showing very clear signs around uh, things leading up until Thanksgiving. Especially this year, if a lot of shopping is done with crypto. If a lot of shopping is done with crypto during the holidays and Black Friday and this, that, and the other, we're going to see crypto blow the fuck up. You know, every year it's taken those spikes to the high and wiped out highs has been November through January. See, my thing is, I'm worried about Trump, not Trump, but Biden. He, uh, I saw some on Coinbase where he basically like, he appointed uh, a crypto critic to the OCC. Right, he did. And he's also trying to um, monitor any transactions done with the USD over $600. I know, I'm already knowing. Cause my, what's crazy, like my uh, my bank account, so I, I bank with, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a credit union there. I got, a, I got a business bank account with them and everything. So they sent me like this, this, um, this like survey to take. Cause they was like, we, we care about you guys, privacy. We don't, you know, we, we don't agree with this. So I sent them, shit, I filled the hell out. But I've been getting right. like a whole bunch of emails from like people from the Congress, like, thank you for your, you know, your, your intake. But, you know, you know how rich white folks are. They, they say, we thank you, but yeah, it's still about to happen. <laughs> right, right, right. And see, <laughs> that's going to push crypto even more towards the moon. For the simple fact, you know, people don't want all the information exposed for every transaction they take and every 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 move they make and this, that, and the other. So with that being said, within the next year or so, or if that's pushed, that's going to push these, uh, these other rich people that aren't necessarily committed to crypto yet, that's going to push them right over the edge. See, and be I'm like, you mean the me. only way to make sure y'all don't monitor my every move is to go crypto? Well, let me move my million dollars over here to crypto <laughs> too. You know what I mean? So that's that's yeah. just gonna push that's gonna push people off, off the edge of the boat, and they're gonna be right there sitting with crypto even more. And that's see, gonna force people to go crypto. And see me, I ain't gonna stand. I know, I, I know. Uh... I know, I, I know to a lot of people, you know, they they, they say, you know, send down all that like, a lot of money, you feel me? But I, I don't really come from it, you feel me? So, like, me me seeing my first, like, 10K this year, this shit mean a lot. Because a lot of my friends, when I talk to them, like, they, you know, they, they ain't good with their money. Some of them got right. good friends. Some of them, little, they still in, they still stuck in college in their head. So, it's, I was like, no, nah, I'm finna just, I'm finna sit back. I ain't finna right. fuck nobody. I'm finna <laughs> Run it up. <laughs> I was run it up. So it's like now I really got about let me see. I say I got about like 40% of my like you know current like you know money amount like to myself, but the rest of it in, in crypto is just sitting right. in crypto. I, I done made I done made two thousand passively like over the last month. Like when, when we jumped in, when you were telling us to jump in for August. I mean, uh -huh. like two, three thousand just passed, just letting it sit. So. Just letting it sit, good shit, good shit. And see, that's what that's that's that has a lot to do with the success of traders or investors. You know, some people want to invest, and you know, they expect to pull the fruit off the tree tomorrow. Yeah, you just gotta see it, <laughs> and then they they don't see no fruit, and then throw the whole tree away. Be like, hey, nigga. You <laughs> you just planted that bitch yesterday. <laughs> uh, it's almost it's, I'm, I'm like, geez, it's, it's like building a house from scratch, where you can't just 
You can't let right. the station and then just pick it up. And then be like, oh, it ain't going to work. Well, uh, <laughs> nigga, you ain't laid no bricks yet. <laughs> exactly. You ain't, you know what I'm saying? You ain't putting them with straw up. Yes, the wind going to blow that bitch away. But see, me, though, like, I don't know. I've, I'm, I've always been a, uh, like, since I'm from Memphis, like, I'm from the murder eight. Everything I got, you feel me? I had to, you know, start from nothing. So it's like, I'm used Hello. to that. I'm okay. used to that, you know, starting from, you know, some small. And like, I remember when I first started DJing, all I had was a laptop. Right. And then I got speakers. Then once I did a little more events, now I can get better speakers. Now I can get tables. You feel me? So you got to build. Same with producing. All I had was a computer and a piano. Now I got a home studio. In fact, same with me. When I started trading, I ain't had nothing but a, a, a fucking couch and a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> So you know what I'm saying? And then with a couch and a laptop, some people would be like, no, I can't trade. I need this, that, and the other. Be like, nigga, if you only know what I had when I started, you got plenty. <laughs> <laughs> and see, that's the thing. I feel like a lot of our generation, like since we live in this, um, you know, this 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 image, you know. Right. This, this, this like, this, this image, less, like, like we, we so focused on image and we so focused on right now. We, you know, a lot of people don't want to work. They don't want to put in the work. They just want right. to They want to see the results right out the gate. They don't want to put no plan together. They don't want to work no no struggle. They want to go straight to the fruit. Exactly. And that's why that's why relationships ain't working right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everybody see money bag and Ari and doing them doing that shit. But nobody talk about when money bag pulled up an R and snatched his wig, snatched a wig off of Miami. They don't talk right. about it. <laughs> they, don't talk about, they don't talk about the struggle. They want to talk about the argument. Exactly. That's right. What, man. And it's, it's crazy. Like, ain't no telling what Ari, you know what I'm saying, went through to even be able to, to get close to a man like that. I'm like, some of y'all women, bro, y'all, y'all, y'all is right. like, y'all Or like even that. what, what money bag had to go through to even get to his spot. Exactly. So it's like, I don't know. Everybody just wants to like. Matter of fact, I feel like Fad Cash. He just he said it. Basically, said, oh hey. yeah. Matter of fact, since you from Memphis, um, what's the word on Poo? Poo Shiesty. Yeah, because I know he um he facing life right now, ain't he? <laughs> Man, he I, I don't know what he faced. I just know he got a lot of charges. He, he getting he getting. Yeah, yeah. They, know, they, he's, they, saying, he's saying at least twenty though for sure. Yeah, that's why I said he at least gonna sit for her. Like he ain't coming home in the next five years. He's gonna be <laughs> gone for a minute. He's gonna be gone for a while. <laughs> yeah, I was I, I was hearing about that shit the other day. Yeah, he's gonna yeah. be gone for a minute. Yeah, to me, I feel like it's kind of like what C Jizzle said, you know, everybody wanna hold a trophy, but nobody wanna run a race with you, you know what I'm saying? Right. Exactly. Right. I was I was thinking about that. I was like, damn, Pooh, they done got you. And it's really like Cold hard evidence on the man, like yeah, like 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 <laughs> you, got, you got high definition footage on you, bro. Right, like <laughs> nigga, they know it was you for a fact. So it's like the only way he could even see a reduced or a light sentence good is man. is talking. Man, good behavior. Right, talk. He either gonna have to tell on somebody, tell something, or get good behavior, or he gonna have to hold it down and ride the whole twenty. Now, and you know, and you know, uh, right. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking about C- CEO Chopper Game from Cane Creek, South Memphis. He ain't telling a thing. Right, so he gonna have, he gonna have to sit. <laughs> and, have to sit. and that's a, you know, there'll be some situations where you could take it to trial, and you know, you could beat it, but he you almost can't did. Take it. Yeah, I'm gonna beat this one. Yeah, what's okay? So, so this is what happened. Like when he originally went to trial, it was only for um the incident at KLD. Remember, okay, the security guard. Right. And, uh, the security. When he guard, shot him in the leg. Yeah, that what well, they, they 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 say he shot him in the foot. Or some shit like that. Right, right, right. The foot or something like that. So, uh, the security guard basically came back, made a statement, said, um, I, I, I. I, I I I don't remember the situation. You know, it kind of happened. You know, basically like saying like, right, trying to try. Got to, off. Yeah, I, it sounded like some because they paid they paid the security guard or something yeah. going there and reduce yeah, they, his his testimony or whatever. Yeah, they, right. They, so he was finna get out, but this other judge was like, 
Yeah, nah, nigga, you, you, uh, <laughs> we still got these over here on, uh, and nah, the yeah. other charges are fed. Exactly, because, bro, you, so, so, okay, you, 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 you hit up this dude for some jewelry and some gas. Oh, shit, hold on, let me, uh, turn this recording off. I got everything when we were going over the tech.